Thank you so much for staying tuned. Well, it's all about what is happening in the House of uh, the, the National Assembly, Boba Green Chamber, and of course uh, the Red Chamber is uh, all about seeking for immunity. It has passed a second reading in the House. Now, it being for an act to alter Section 308 of the 1999 Constitution to extend immunity to cover up presiding officers of legislative institutions has passed second reading in the House of Representatives. And of course, the, it was sponsored by Rep. Odebomi, Olushego, APC, or your and uh, was passed at the plenary on Tuesday. And due to this, Nigerians have been reacting, they've been talking about it. Why would you be seeking for immunity? And this time around is from the ruling party in the House. The ready one pushing and uh, sponsoring and trying to make sure that the bill is established to protect the leadership. And then just are like saying, is this what we want now? Or is anything about to happen that we are not seeing as a nation? But they in the house, they've seen it already. Or is it because of experience of the past? Remember, we had the former president of the Senate. And of course, uh, the deputy uh, uh, Senate president also, they were dragged to court, even when they were occupying that uh, hallowed office, so to speak. Or is it a kind of a way to break the chains of control? Yeah, between the tiers or within the tiers of government. Is it going to benefit Nigerians? Is it going to lead to a speedy dispensation of laws, bills, orders? You just name it. With me here in the studio to do analysis, to do justice to this particular topic, I have two legal practitioners here with me. Yeah. I'd like to start my introduction by introducing a legal practitioner, an Islamic scholar, a political analyst. Join me to welcome Al Haji Barrister Amin Alao. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Good morning, viewers. Appreciate your coming. All right, and sitting very close to him is another legal practitioner, uh, a political analyst, a human rights activist. Join me to welcome Barrister Thank God Ilube. Welcome to the show, Barrister. Thank you for having me. Uh, all right, and we are still expecting the likes of uh, uh, Bashir Kamari, yeah, uh, a former uh, permanent secretary in the Ministry of Greek a Labour devotee, a political analyst. When it comes, he will join us in the discussion. Now, gentlemen, so many things have been going on in this country. You want to lay your hands on this, another one will pop up. Before we want to talk about this, it's like a cascade of events happening and here we have a house the national assembly seeking for immunity for its leadership they give reasons for it even the house some are not for it some are against it but somewhere along the line it passed second reading let me start off from you barrister thank god a little bit how do you feel about this development well <clears throat> for me i think um it's here and there. First and foremost, the House must have thought it wise that uh, it was necessary for its leadership to enjoy some level of immunity so that it can uh, best save their positions and ensure that they are able to serve as a check and balances, a check and balance which they ought to have on other aspects of the government, such as the executive, most especially, and then the judiciary. If they had thought it wise that, look, because of the embarrassment their leadership have been getting ever from the executive in court, while trying to carry out the legal functions, it would have been appropriate for them to enjoy some immunity, just like uh, the executives have been enjoying. I think from that side of the divide, it would uh, be appropriate. However, there's another side of the story. In the long run, or even in the short run, will it be an advantage to the Nigerian people? Are we going to benefit from all these... Uh, uh, 
new postulations to our legal uh, jurisprudence as it affects the, as, uh, the House of Assembly? Is it going to be of advantage to the common man? I think that's where the, the issue lies. Because if it is going to be in the collective interest of the proletariat, as it were, and the Nigerian system, as it were, then it is OK. But if it is not, then the challenges, again, that we have been trying to uh, avoid as a nation comes in. For me, it's here and there. Mm. Because the executive enjoys some privileges, which makes it very difficult for the National Assembly to function appropriately. Because you cannot serve as a check and a balance to somebody that is in quote higher than you in authority. If the executive have been enjoying immunity, then why should the National Assembly not enjoy? And why should it not even be extended to the judiciary? Because we are looking at the leadership here. And if it is the leadership, it should cut across. And if we are removing it, then we are removing it generally. But how this is going to metamorphose into benefit for the Nigerian populace is another cause for concern. All right. Now that is why we'll take it from. But before that, let's get to hear from uh, uh, Barrister Alao. Uh, I mean, how do you feel about this? Thank you very much. Uh, if we are talking of a justice, <laughs> justice is a principle that should be applied to the letter. Partial application of justice will be tantamount to injustice. It's either there is justice fully or there is no justice. You cannot say no, there is half justice. It's not possible. So if we are talking of the leadership of the executive enjoying immunity all this while, and there was no attempt to take that away from the executive, and it has remained there in our constitution, I think it is long overdue that the other arms of government, the legislature and the judiciary also start enjoying this immunity. The leadership. When you're talking of the theory of checks and balances, how do you check, how do you balance when you don't have immunity? When the president has immunity, the governor has immunity. The speaker of the House of Assembly does not have immunity. The uh, CJ, the state, does not have immunity. The leadership of the National Assembly does not have immunity. Then you cannot be talking of proper checks and balances. And from what you have been witnessing, sometimes you observe what is called executive rascality. The executive, whether I like it or not, have been so powerful. And the power of the executive continues to be on the increase. Because, of course, the executive controls the fund. And that is already a major advantage to the executive. Now, when you talk of immunity generally, the only unfortunate thing is that those who are in government, majority of them, let put it that way, are not after the interests of the masses. They are not there to serve. Some are there for different reasons. And that explains why, after the so-called independence that we attain, we are yet to be dependent. We are, we are, we are still dependent. We are, we are not independent at all. Major project, projects in our country are still being carried out by foreigners. We invite the Chinese, we invite the Americans, come and do this, until we start manufacturing our own aircraft. Talking of independence. So our independence, as at the time we attained it, it was premature. We were not right for that independence when we demanded it. And this is the fallout. The consequence is what we are now seeing. You want a leadership that will be after the interests of you, the masses. No, you cannot get it. Because you don't have the way with that to have it. Generally, we all enjoy immunity. Let me look at the religious angle now. From God. All human beings enjoy immunity from God. All human beings. And that's why God said in a particular verse of the Quran that if God were to punish men for their sins, not one creature will remain on the surface of the earth 
but he has left them to an appointed time. Now, when that time comes, not for a moment, can you delay it? Or, no, can you go before it? And that's our update. Assuming immediately I commit a sin against God, I die. And you die. Not all of us will be alive. So God gives us the room to repent before we come to Him. But surely you die and come to Him and give account. So whoever is giving the ministry is for a temporary period. We have some governors who are the ministry, but as of now, they are convicted. They are sent to prison. So you come in with your immunity, then do not be disciplined. Do whatever you like. Let your cup be filled. When you leave office, we come after you. We send you to jail. As simple as ABC. But in order to ensure that the principle of checks and balances is uh, really encouraged, there is need not only for the leadership of the National Assembly, but for the leadership of the third arm of government, which is a very, very vital arm of government, and that is judiciary. Otherwise, we will see that the judges will not have the confidence to actually dispense justice when it has to do with the executive. All right. All right. Now, now people have been talking uh, about this because it came up last week or, or there about. Now, uh, they are saying that asking for immunity is like anti-democratic in the sense of that is going to impede in the fight against corruption. You might even buy for the removal of immunity from the president and even the governors. Check it out from there. Like I earlier said, <coughs> what is good for the goose is good for the ganders. If the National Assembly thinks that it will be extremely difficult for them to start moving the processes of removing the immunity of governors and as well as uh, deputy governors, the presidents and the vice president, uh, the only way to balance it up is to up the game by asking for the immunity of the leadership of the house. I think again they've also made a flaw if they didn't add the judiciary along. We just saw what happened to uh, the then Chief Justice of Nigeria, uh, what I know there. I think because he didn't have immunity. That's why some of those things happened. And if the House of Assembly is also very selfish, not being uh, mindful of the fact that Nigeria is involved in this matter, I think you know, projecting only the House of Assembly without necessarily considering the CGN's office and other relevant offices like that. That means they've not been fair to Nigerians. And in my own view, I think they should urgently, or because they wanted to move very fast, they left the judiciary behind. You know, this is a matter of, oh, let me get my own first before I start thinking of others. I'm sure that's what they considered. But in a nutshell, if you cannot bring those up down, then bring those down up. I think that's my argument. Mm. It's just the same problem we're having when it comes to worker salary and uh, improvement in welfare packages. There are some people that are any so so very fat in this country by virtue of their jobs as government functions and all that. Why others are any so very low or almost nothing? If you cannot bring those up down because they are already benefiting from up, then take those down off so that it creates equitable distribution of wealth and all that. I think that is the challenge we have as a nation because there's no equitability in all these things. So for me, my take is that if the National Assembly is fair enough to Nigerians, Add the judiciary along, then make your case and then present it to uh, you. know, speaking from the angle of that, you are in the legal profession because right now, both we are talking about adding judiciary into all of this. No, as much, community. as much as I am concerned, yeah. because I've weighed it here and there, mm -hmm. my view is that we talk about separation of powers, checks and balances. Now, we find a situation where in our system is becoming extremely difficult for the, uh, the legislature and then the judiciary to check on the excesses of the executive. And take, take note properly, you discover that this constitution we are operating was actually given to us by the military, who then were in office using their powers as the military uh, uh, officers to ensure that their offices were protected or that of 
the president and the vice president as well as the governors were protected. They left other arms of government, which is an error in itself. But if it has to be corrected, let them take all the stakeholders along. And let everybody have some level of immunity at that level. We'll talk about the leadership of the judiciary and the legislature. I'm not being biased as far as I'm concerned. It's not about the, uh, the, the, the legal profession. It's about a situation where all the stakeholders enjoy some level of immunity and then they find it easy to check on each other right. to make the system better off all right now uh, uh, from our state here uh, Edo state uh, our, our rep uh, member such as ogo pdp Edo state and of course uh, uh bob solomon pdp river state they are totally against it do they win the house but the, for the reason they said is that this is a time when nigerians were seeking for the removal of immunity from the executive the legislature should not be asking for immunity. Now, these are seven members of the House of Representatives. How do you feel about their views on this? They are saying no to it. Take it out, even from the executive. Remove it so that everyone will be accountable to the society and the system. Mm. They, they are entitled to their views, mm. just like I am entitled to mine. Yeah. Now, if we look at the concept the intention of bringing in a concept really matters at the point of implementation it may be corrupted but that does not mean there is no good in that concept when you look at this doctrine of immunity to look at the aims of affairs it is to enable them concentrate on the business of governance you imagine a situation whereby the president commander-in-chief of the armed forces mm -hmm. of the federal of Nigeria is having about 1,000 suits in the court. Or possibly you've even gone to the law enforcement agents to get Mr. President arrested. How do you concentrate? Even Almighty God, people are not pleased with God. They say, God, why me? Why me? Why me? People protest against God. Only people, few people believe in faith, that I believe in my destiny. Whatever condition Almighty God puts me, I accept. Let alone human beings who are the heirs of affairs. If the doctrine of humanity is removed, then of course, know that your so-called leader will not have the time to face the business of governance or busy defending himself here and there. And that is the motive, the intention behind bringing this doctrine from the beginning, from the onset. And that explains why I will not be supporting the removal of the immunity, especially when it is temporary immunity, whether I like it or not. It is only while you are in office. And you are in office for four years, if you are elected, okay, for another four years. Once you are out of office, then of course, I can pick on you, file action against you, get you arrested, and so on and so forth. So the removal of the immunity will not do us any good, It'll do us more harm than good. And that is my own argument. But I emphasize again, I restate that it is very necessary, absolutely necessary, in order to ensure the autonomy of the judiciary to also make sure that the CJN, the office of the CJN, and then the chief justice in the state, uh, 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 CJ in the states, also enjoy this immunity. It is there we now know, yes, there is now proper separation of powers, independence of the judiciary, the legislature, the executive, and now the principle of checks and balances cannot properly operate. That's my submission. All right, now if you take a look at this, it was sponsored by an APC member. Uh, of the house and of course some pdp also like uh in the menu supported it say yes it should be granted immunity while some others are like saying uh uh no one judge leader of the house rep uh, of, of rep ado dogua apc cano to the house not to shy away from discussing the matters that concern the institution now do you see uh lack of immunity as a tool that is preventing the speaker and of course, the Senate President from deciding on important national issues. I mean, that is, that is obvious. Mm. That is obvious because um, when you are in an office, you have to check your past, your limitations. 
And when you check it here and there, you see that you have to be objective. You have to face realities. You want to do certain things, you see that uh, the executive has powers over you in, as far as those issues are concerned. They know where to, what to do. They know how to, to go against you to ensure that you are not able to achieve that purpose. Then you are limited. We have said it times over and over again that there are certain circumstances even if you know what you ought to do but if you don't have the capacity the will or the strength or the necessary legal environment upon which you should carry out those activities you are inhibited or you are limited and so i think that is why they are learning from their predecessors they've, so, they've seen what the the national assembly over the years have suffered from the executives by the time you see that oh uh, the National Assembly is trying to carry out a very just cause at a point in time. The executive comes with a different opinion. The legislatures become uh, scared, as it were, weakened, and they ignore such issues. Sometimes when they dare, they suffer the aftermath of such a, a, a strength or such a dares. So, in my view, I think that the National Assembly, not just the National and the Judiciary as well, have not been properly positioned to act in their capacity as they ought to do. I must give kudos to the member who has sponsored it because having been able to think of such an idea, he must have thought it over and over again to say, look, I am a victim of this and my other senior colleagues are also victims. How do we correct this anomaly and i think he has been able to do that which is necessary under our present environment we must know that nigeria is a, is a special circumstance because people are found not being able to do what they ought to do because first of all if the heart is not willing and then the circumstance does not give you the environment so in my view the judiciary the national House of assembly the leadership of these two arms of government are long overdue for immunity and it will not be appropriate like my senior colleague just mentioned to start to think of removing the immunity of the executive so that you can put them on proper platform because that's the only way they can act as check and balance because it's also advantage of an advantage to the system to ensure that while they are in office they enjoy these privileges if they are in office, they should enjoy it. It's a system that wants to work or is ready to work. It cannot be more than eight years for the executive. Then, but for the National Assembly, we don't also know that the, the, we have to also look at other limitations that are also bedevilling this kind of law. Because as of today, if you are a member of the National Assembly, you can come back over and over and over again. So it is not necessarily because you, you don't have a, an eight-year tenure like the executive. That's the highest tenure you can run. So you can run it over and assuming we have a Senate president who can be there over and over and over and over again. So what are the limitations being uh, put in place to check such excesses? Like we have David Mack then, who almost did how many tenures as a Senate president. So, but if they also look at this aspect, I think it will be a very, very important position for us. If they look at the act, we have been coming back because there is no limit to their terms in office. All right, I, I will come back to you. Now, people have the opinion that maybe there is a crack in the ruling party because of what is happening in our country today. Hence, a proposal for this was made by a member of the ruling party. Do you sense a crack in the unity of the party? Uh, it does not necessarily matter. Even though you are in the same party, it does not mean that uh, in principles and ideologies you share the same view. It doesn't matter. Member of the same family may have their difference of, of opinion. And uh, as we are here in this studio, we are, we are Nigerians, we are entitled to our opinions. And so opinions differ depending on the individual. It doesn't matter if you are in the same, uh, in the same party. Uh, that at this stage that the APC is in government, there is a move that uh, there's need uh, for immunity for leadership of the National Assembly. It doesn't matter. The right thing uh, uh, ought to be done, and I feel it's the right step in the right direction from the submissions we have made earlier on. Uh, but uh, there is need for caution, uh, based on the point my learned friend has just mm -hmm. raised now, uh, to avoid 
the leadership of the Senate perpetuating itself in office. Because if I now have that immunity and I keep enjoying that immunity, of course, if care is not taken, it may end up that the leadership of the Senate will be leaving office and becoming the president of the country, of the nation. And so possibly some other professors may be uh, introduced to ensure uh, there's limitation also to number of uh, years you can uh, uh, be on that seat enjoying that immunity as a leader of the national assembly. Even if you can be re-elected and re-elected and re-elected, okay, then the office of the leadership, you cannot remain there perpetually. There should be such clauses that you cannot remain there perpetually uh, for it not to be abused. You see, the, why the executive have been enjoying immunity all this while, why the other two arms have not, possibly it may be because of the voting pattern and the strategy. If you look at it, the president or the executive leadership was elected by the generality of the people in the country. Every state, the 36 states, and he won, having overall majority. But if you look at a member of the National Assembly, he was elected from his state. It is after getting to the House that, that his colleagues now decided to now elect him to that position. So if you look at it, the president has more control of votes than that particular person. The same thing happens to, if you look at the, uh, the CJ in a particular state, you are not actually put there by the majority of the people in the country. But if you look at the appointment of judges, judges you will see that I can say is the best to follow. It is based on merit and seniority and not just, oh, I have the, the cash. I can influence it. I cannot influence it. The rules are there. We follow strictly. And people need to learn a lot from the judiciary and not try to castigate the judiciary. And you can see the experience we had about the former CGN. Okay. Some are trying to say that oh, the judiciary, the CGN can be treated like this. No. It does not lie in the mouth of the executive to say that the judiciary is corrupt. They don't lie in their mouth. If you say judiciary is corrupt, who corrupts the judiciary? Who are the money by trying to flesh them? And that is why there is need for this immunity to be extended to not only the National Assembly or the State House Assembly, the judiciary as well, so that we have been repeating we can have proper separation of powers, proper checks and balances. Of course, when you leave office, if you abuse your immunity, by looting and stealing. At the end of the day, you go to prison. Well, now, people are depending that this will impede the fight against corruption, that some office holders will use immunity as a shield. How do you view that? Well, for me, the issue of corruption is a system that is serious. When we have a system that is ready to remove the minor or the minute uh, negative effects in the system, it will work. But for the generality of us, I think we, th we do believe that, oh, if we grant them immunity, they cannot be tried. But it's for a limited time. We have governors that have served, for, served this country since 2007. We have people who have served this country 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. If the system is ready to ensure that their disservice are tried, immunity does not now serve as a preventing mechanism. Take for instance, uh, the former Senate President, uh, Saraki, yeah. as he was, is no longer in the House of Assembly. If you now feel that he has not done well while in office, is anybody holding the government or the system from trying him? We have so many governors 
so many deputy governors, so many persons who have had offices in this country. If the system is ready, they've left office. You can try them. So the argument that, oh, when you give them immunity, you cannot try them wide enough, I think it is not a smart idea. It's not a smart argument. Because the other argument holds better. That let these guys be able to function very well while in office, do their checks and balances on each other. And then when they all leave office, they can now begin to throw whatever they think is their disagreement financially against each other. But while they are in office, let them have the same platform to function and to operate. So in my view, I don't think this is an impediment on corruption. Because as it is today, we are yet to see any serving officer that was in office, either in the National Assembly, okay, maybe at the judiciary, hopefully today, whatever has happened to Honorable Justice uh, Onoge, whether it was corruption or not, as of today, we have not gotten the result. If we say the man was corrupt, have they been able to prove it? They've not done that. They always you keep bringing the CJ, the famous CJ. Yeah, yeah it is. because I, I can always say that, man, you were like, you know, a little bit biased because you, 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 what you want the, the, the government of the day to extend the immunity to the CJN. Yes, yes. The issue here being discussed yeah. is that of corruption. Mm. If the government, because I remember they removed him from office because he didn't sign or he didn't perfect his code of conduct, uh, what's your assets, uh, this thing properly. You and I are yet to see what has come up with it, what, what it has ended now. Is it just removing of, 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 in office? If we felt that he did something wrong while he was in office, what has been, what is his position today? If not that the ruling party just wanted to, to ease him out of office, if they didn't just want to ease him out of office, then they should tell us what he has done negatively as far as this country is concerned. Oh, but they've not done that. So I think, in my view, the situation is, the, the, the corruption uh, argument mm -hmm. does not host way. When they leave office, you will go to try them. All right. That's my position. When they leave office, you will try them. Well, uh, in this segment, uh, Barista Law, you didn't want to have your last uh, uh, take on this uh, uh, discussion because we're about to enter into another discussion talking about the Federal Character Commission, the proposed restructuring. Now, what advice do you have for the National Assembly? And of course, millions of Nigerians clamoring for them not to be immunity for the leadership of National Assembly. And they're talking about a stripping off of the immunity bestowed on the president governors. You just name it. I uh, thank you. Uh, I will take it from the angle of corruption and then end up with what you have asked. Uh, when you look at this issue of corruption, we it appears as if we have decided to live with corruption. And uh, the reason why we are saying immunity should be granted to the National Assembly is not uh, because there is no corruption in the country. There is corruption. And of course, to tackle this corruption effectively, we need to look at the National Assembly itself. Corruption does not mean you stealing or you looting what was not uh, what what was not assigned to you corruption includes taking more than what you are entitled to if the lawmakers will not review the law to reduce and review their packages and their allowances and salaries it is corruption it is corruption it is absolute corruption if a member of the National Assembly will be going on without millions and up to now nothing is done about it, it's corruption. And so they need to look at that. I'm not against the National Assembly. I've been advocating that yes, let them be given immunity. At the same time, I'm now challenging them that now to help this nation, please be ready to make sacrifice and reduce your salaries and allowances. There was one person that did that, Albert Redeva Anu, when he was appointed as Khalifa. We didn't mention that story. He was going to the market, uh, to go for his business. He said, where are you going? You're not the president. You can't do business anymore. He said, I'll be my family. He said, don't worry. We fix for you 
an amount for an average citizen. Then an amount was fixed for him as the president commander of armed forces. Then a time came, the wife said, I didn't want to buy expensive soup. I want to cook, I want to cook a very sweet dish. She said, I don't have that money. My salary is meager. Then the wife was now managing to save some money after several months and said, Oh, my husband, I've saved enough. You can prepare sweet dish. She said, Oh, you mean you can save from our meager resources? Oh, that means we have been receiving over and above our needs. That was why we were able to save. He now ordered the governor central bank to cut down his salary and allowances by the amount saved by the wife. Seriously, this, <laughs> yeah, these yeah. are leaders who yeah. are ready to make sacrifice. sacrifice. Not the minimum wage is very, very big, easy to pay 30 million. The money given, the, the food given to the slave is not meant for the slave to be robust, mm. but to prevent the slave from dying. So, if you know that minimum wage is 30k, then consider how much you are taking home. If you are the lawmaker, you have made an unjust law, that is corruption itself. And of course, if the people cannot hold you accountable, of course, Almighty God will hold you accountable. How did you appropriate that amount to yourself? And why didn't you reduce it? So that is corruption on its own. Right. And that needs to be looked at. Right. There should be equal, at least even, different resources. Okay. Equitable. All right. Thank you so, so much, gentlemen. Well, you've heard them talking about proposed immunity for a mass leadership impact in democracy. Many Nigerians are still not happy about it. One many of the opinion that it should be given to them because they need all the courage they can muster to really talk about issues bedeviling the country currently so they won't have any fear about what happened in the last uh, uh, members, yes, the, 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 the leaders of the last uh, uh, mass leadership, you yeah, are begging your pardon so they can really focus in that laws for the betterment of Nigerians. What's your take on nature? Let me grant immunity, or it should be taken out of the board. Hmm, a good question for you to answer. Right now, I want to go for a break when we return. Is all about the Federal Character Commission questions arising. We'll be right back. <laughs> 